Hello everyone, my name's Dave, and in this video, I'm going to show you a retro first-person shooter game that I created 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. The idea is that I want to create something that has more to it than a simple tutorial, but is less complex than a commercial game. I think that there's already so many great tutorials and commercial games these days, and there's no point of me trying to make more of them. I figure it'd be really cool to create a game that's only a few thousand lines of code long, where anyone with basic programming skills can not only learn how it works, but access the code and modify it. What's really unique about this project is how the graphics are drawn. While modern games draw everything as a bunch of colored triangles, such as my other game, 46 Pegasus B, I decided to set this game up in a retro way, where there's 2D images and a 2D level that you play in first person mode. The overall idea is that the level is made up of a grid where each cell is either a wall or empty. On the diagram in front of you, the cells with walls are blue and the empty cells are gray. The walls are drawn based on the position and angle of the player. I split the width of the screen into vertical lines and defined an angle for the field of view. It represents how much of the world the player sees. A ray cast is then performed for each vertical line to measure the distance from the player to the nearest wall. The way the ray cast code works is that it starts at the start position and moves cell by cell on the level in the specified direction. The first part of the code determines how far the edge of the current cell is from the start position in both the specified x and y directions. Then a loop is started that constantly checks along the specified direction to determine if the next cell will be in the x or y direction. Then the position being checked is set to the new spot along with some other variables such as the position on the piece of wall which determines what color will be drawn. For example, if it's the corner, it will be drawn dark. It turns out that the code for this ray cast not only works well for the situation to determine information for drawing walls, but also for enemy units to determine if the player is visible or not. In both cases, a check for a piece of wall is performed. And then, depending on the outcome and situation, the necessary distance and color information is eventually output. The distance measured by the raycast is then used to determine the height of each vertical line. To do this, imagine the player looking at a piece of wall. Let's set the height of every piece of wall to be one unit. Therefore, half the height is 0.5 units. We know the distance to it from the player and can therefore create a right angle triangle. We can then use basic trigonometry to calculate the angle specified on the diagram, theta. And just keep in mind that the angle only represents half the height of the wall. Separately, we can use the angle for the field of view that we recently defined to figure out how many pixels each amount of angle represents. And I'll just mention that the angles are all in radians, not degrees. We then multiply them and get the height to draw the vertical line. And the code that puts all this together is in front of you. The images are done in a similar way. The center position of the image in the x direction, so that's left to right on the screen of course, is based on the angle between where the player is currently facing, so in this case towards the top of your screen, and the vector that points from the player to the center of the image. So in this case you can see the line going through the heart image and the spot that lands on the screen. We can also use the exact same technique that was used to calculate the height of a vertical line to calculate the size that the image needs to be drawn on the screen. Initially I decided to draw the entire image. However, when there's a piece of wall in front of it, that part of the image should be blocked and only the rest should be drawn. However, as you can see, 
it draws the whole thing. To fix this, we need to draw the image vertical line by vertical line, just like we did for the wall. I'll start by showing you the code that's used to determine the position and size each image needs to be drawn. Before each vertical line is drawn, the distance from the player to the previously drawn vertical line is compared to the distance from the player to the image. If the image is closer, then the vertical line for the image gets drawn. Otherwise, it doesn't. In addition, the order the images are drawn matters. They must be drawn from furthest to closest. Otherwise, as you can see, if a closer image is drawn first, it could easily block an image that's further away. To do this, I add all the images that need to be drawn to a list. Then sort and draw each image one by one. The next thing we're going to look at is the level design. The first and one of the most important parts of the game is the tutorial. This is because in order for a player to have fun, they need to know how to operate and play the game. And unfortunately, if this part's done wrong, then most people will become very frustrated and quit. The best way to create the tutorial is to incorporate it into gameplay and then slowly allow the player to learn any differences between this game and other games they've played in the past. I chose to start off the tutorial with an overlay that has the controls listed. They're pretty much the same as any other first person shooter, so there's not really a need to spend too much time on this part. From there, the player starts off in a very small room, and it only has one exit and a coin directly in front. I did this on purpose to keep the number of choices limited, and that way it makes it easy for the player to know what to do. From there, they enter a small room, and this time there's an enemy unit that's very weak. This allows the player to learn what an enemy unit looks like, how it behaves, and allows them to try out their weapon. After they destroy an enemy unit, there's a heart that they pick up to replenish the health that they've lost. From there, they enter another small room and pick up some ammo. Then, after that, they go to yet another small room which has another enemy. What this does is it allows the player to see that having ammo makes their weapon shoot faster than when it had a low battery. Next, there's more ammo and some coins to make the player feel like they've been rewarded. However, as soon as they pick up the coins, two enemy units start to attack. And what this does is it allows the player to get used to attacking multiple enemies, it increases the difficulty slightly, and it lets them know that when they pick up loot, they might get attacked, so they better be prepared. After that, there's another small room with a few hearts, coins, and ammo to replenish what's been used and encourage the player to play further. From there, they go into a room that's set up a little bit differently, and there's a new, more powerful enemy waiting for them. It not only shoots faster, but has more health too. From there, they get a bunch more pickups as rewards and enter a big room. At this point, I'd say that the tutorial is pretty much finished. However, I will mention that I did stick to the same process throughout the game. Another important part of level design is to constantly change the way that everything is set up and looks because you don't want it to become repetitive and boring. I constantly changed the sizes of the rooms, have hallways, a simple maze, combine multiple different types of units together to increase the difficulty levels over time, and many more things. I even added some secrets where you can pick up additional coins, but I'm not going to show you them here because I don't want to spoil them for when you play the game yourself. Because the game is retro and essentially a 2D level, but played in first person mode, there's no option to change the level vertically. So for example, adding steps or changing the height of the rooms. But if it was a modern game, I would have done something with that too. The game finally ends when you find the green flag, walk over to it and see the victory overlay. Both the game and all the source code is available on my website. Link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.